Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a new uh, video about structure analysis. Within this video, we will be learning together how to apply the moment distribution methods uh, in reinforced concrete beams. The main steps that you need to follow when you analyze using the moment distribution method will be as the following. Step number one, we have to calculate the stiffness factors for each span, and then we have to calculate the distribution factors uh, for uh, each joint at both sides of the joints. Then the second step to calculate the fixed end moments for each span. For step one and step two, you can start by the fixed end moment, it doesn't matter, or you can start by calculating the K and distribution factor, so it is up to you. Then the third step, we have to make a table. And from that table, we'll be able to make the distributions, carryovers, and then we can repeat the distribution and the carryover uh, until we reach uh, a good accuracy. Uh, then after that, we get the submission of bending moments for each uh, column in the table to get the final moments. And finally, and if it is required, you can calculate reactions. You can draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagrams. It's not always required to uh, draw the shear and the moment and calculate reactions. We can stop only by uh, getting the submission of, uh, of uh, the bending moments. Uh, to do that, we will go through uh, two examples. The first example, as you can see here, it is a th uh, three span beams. A, B, C, and D. The first span is 12 meters, then we have 12 meters and 8 meters. Uh, span AB is not uh, loaded. Uh, span BC is loaded by a uniform distributed load, uh, 20 kilonewton per meter. And then we have uh, a concentrated load of 250 kilonewton at the middle of the third span. What is required in this problem? It is required to determine the internal moments at each support of the beam shown in this figure. And it is given here that the EI is constant. The inertia is constant. The modulus elasticity of the material is constant. So let's start by the steps. OK, the first one is to calculate the stiffness factors or the K. Stiffness factor is depending on the supports of the span. For the first span here, it is fixed and continuous from at B. So when it is continuous at this point, if we cut it here, we assume that it is fixed. So it will be like as a fixed, fixed support. And in this case, the uh, KAB equals 4 EI over L. This is the famous uh, stiffness factor for a fixed, fixed end. So it is 4 EI over L. The EI is constant, so we can eliminate it. So it will be only 4 over L or 4 over 12. This will be 1 over 3. Similar to that, for the second span, again, it is continuous, continuous. So it will be assumed as fixed, fixed. So it will be, again, 4 EI over L, the same span. So it will be also 4 over 12 divided. Uh, it will be 1 over 3. The third one, again, it will be continuous at C, so assumed as fixed and fixed for the end span, so it will be as fixed, fixed. So again, 4 EI over L, and in this case, the L is 8 meters, so it will be 4 over 8, it will be uh, 1 over 2. So these are the stiffness factors. As you can see, all of them, we use the general stiffness factor, which is 4 EI over L. Then we move to the second step about, or within the first step, distribution factor, because actually we need this stiffness factor to get the distribution factors. So distribution factors, we can get them at each joint from both sides. So for joint A and joint D, we have only element in one side. So we can get the fixed end moment at A and fixed end moment at D. This is easy. So because this is a fixed support, so as we have seen in the previous video, the for fixed support, distribution factor will be equal to zero. So distribution factor AB equal zero. Then for the second joint, joint B, we should have two distribution factors at the left and also at the right. Okay, at the left here, it will be the K for the left divided by the K of the joint. So it will be KAB divided by KAB plus KBC. So we can see here, KAB is 1 over 3 divided by KAB plus 
KBC, one over three plus one over three. So this will result in a distribution factor BA at this point here equals to half. The distribution factor BC should be uh, the submission of the distribution factor as the join should be equal to one. So if this is 0.5, the other one also will be 0.5 because it will be one over three divided by one over three plus one over three, it will give us the same. Then let's move to joint C. We'll do similar to what we did at joint B. Distribution factor at CB equals again, KBC divided by KBC plus KCD. So it will be one over three divided by one over three plus one over two, as we can see here. So this will give us a 0.4 distribution factor. Okay, for CB. So here, this is a mistake. This one should be like CB. Okay, this one, CB. Then we have to get the distribution factor of CD. So if this is 0.4, the other one will be 0.6. Then the last one at fixed support, this is a known one, distribution factor DC equals to zero. So we can just conclude the distribution factors as we can see here, 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and zero at the fixed support. By getting the stiffness factor and distribution factor, we finish the step number one. So we can go to step number two and it will include calculating the fixed end moments. Again, the fixed end moments will depend on, for each span, will depend if it is fixed, fixed, or if it is fixed pin support. Also, it will depend on the loads on that span. For span AB, as we can see, it, there is no load at all. So in this case, the fixed end moment should be zero. And for span BC, it is continuous, continuous. So it will be assumed as fixed, fixed, and we have uniform load. And then the third span, we have concentrated load. So for each one of this, we'll go to the fixed end moment table and we get the value of the moment. For sure here, for the first span, you don't need to go to any table because if there is no load, there will be uh, no moment also, and the fixed end moment AB and fixed end moment BA will be zero and zero. For the second span, it is the famous case of uniform load over a fixed fixed end. So in this case, the fixed end moment left and right will be W square over 12. So W square over 12 for BC and also for CB. But according to the moment distribution method, if the moment is Counterclockwise rotation, we assume it as negative. However, if it is clockwise rotation, it will be assumed as positive. So they are the same, but this is negative because it's counterclockwise. The other one is positive because it's clockwise and the value is WL square over 12. Then for the last span, it is concentrated load over fixed, fixed support. So in this case, it's PL over eight. The fixed in the moment left and right, they will be similar, but, uh, and it will be PL over four over eight, PL over eight. So P, which is 250 times eight over eight. So it will give us 250. And again, don't forget that uh, counterclockwise rotation is will be negative. Clockwise rotation will be positive. So at the left side here will be minus 250. However, at the right part, it will be 250. So we finished the first and second step. Then we will go to the third step about making the table. Okay, these are the distribution factors. These are the fixed end moments that we calculated from step one and step two. Then we make this table, okay, for the first row in the table will be the joint. So we have joint A, joint B, and joint C, and joint D. We have four joints. Then we have to add the members. This member is AB. Then for joint B, you have two members, BA and BC. So BA and BC. Then for joint C, it will be CB and CD, and then add the last support, fixed support, it will be DC. The third row, it will be the distribution factor. So we got the values that we calculated in step number one. This is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and here again, it is zero. Then we have to put the values of fixed in the moment. Fixed in the moment A, B, and B, A are zeros. So this will be zero and zero. Then for the second span, minus 240, then plus 240, minus 250, and plus 250, okay? These are the uh, information that we got from 
step one and step number two. And now we need to start making distribution and carry over. How to do the distribution? We go with joint by joint. So for the joint B, we get the summation of these moments. So we have zero and minus 240. So the summation or the unbalanced moment will be minus 240. The counter unbalancing moment will be opposite. So we get the summation of this value here and we get the opposite. Okay, so the opposite will be plus 240. Then we multiply the 240 by 0.5 and we get the value here will be 120. And then we multiply the 240 by 0.5, it will be another 120. The important point here is that the summation of all moment here should be zero. So if you have here, at the first row minus 240, the second row should be positive 240. In this case, it is 120, 120 because the distribution factor is zero and zero. Let's repeat this in the second joint, as joint C. In joint C, we have two fixed end moments, plus 240 and minus 250. So the submission will be in minus, minus 10. If it is minus, you expect that the distribution here and here will be opposite, will be positive. So the summation will be 10 multiplied by 0.4, it will give us 4, and multiply the 10 by 0.6, it will give us 6. Okay. Again, the summation of the moments here minus 10 and plus 10, so it should be 0. We finish the distribution step, we have to go to the carryover step. Carryover, it occurs from one joint to the other joint, one end of one member to the other end of the member. So it should be at these lines between the joints. Therefore, you can put two lines here or you can put a bold line so you will not get confused. So the carryover is always 50% of the moment, 50% of the moment as with this and also with the same sign. So you have here 120, it will give you a carryover here of plus 60, okay, so this will be 60. Here you have uh, 120 will give also a carryover of 60, and this four will give you a carryover of two. So the four will give you two, 50%, and 120 will give us 60. Then this six also will give us a carryover of three at the fixed end here. When we have fixed ends, we should have carryover. If we have pin or ruler support, there is no carryover, and we are going to see this after a few minutes in the coming example. Then we finished the carryover. So let's repeat the same steps that we did in the distribution. So here you have plus two. So here it should be minus minus. So it will be minus two times 0.5. It will give us minus one and then minus one. Then here you have plus 60. So plus 60, the moment here and here should be minus. So it will be minus, multiply 60 times 0.4. It will be minus 24 and 60 minus multiplied by 0.6. It will give us 36 and in minus. Again, the submission should be zero. The submission here should be zero. Then let's repeat the carryover 50%, similar to what we did. This will give us these values. You can see here the carryovers here are less than the carryover values that we got in the uh, second part of the table. With more trials, with each trial, with each calculation of carryover distribution, the values of the moment will decrease, okay? So it decreased. We are going to repeat again the distribution as we did. So this will be the values. Then we repeat the carryover again. The carryovers now are getting smaller and smaller, 3.1, and here we have three, okay? So we can make another distribution, and you can see here these distribution values are very small now, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 1.2, and here 1.8. If you want to continue with one more step, because here you have 1.2 and 1.8, it's okay, it's up to you. But we can see that these values are very small compared to the initial moment. So it is less than 1%. This is okay, you can stop here because you got a good accuracy. But if you want to go more, it's up to you. But four steps are totally enough to get a reasonable value of the carryover and distribution. We stop with the distribution, as you can see here, and then the uh, coming step is to get the submission of the all moments starting from the fixed end moment until the last moment here. So we'll get the submission of the moment and you can see here it will be 62.5 and then 124.95 and here minus 124.5. The important point here that you need to check is at joint B here, the moment left and right should be the same but with 
a different sign. If you have positive here, it should be negative here. So it should be in equilibrium. Summation of this should be zero. Unless you have an external moment on the beam from the beginning. This will take this special cases when you have external moment in a coming video. When you have a cantilever, and you, when you have external joint moment, in this case, you will not have them similar, okay? But in most problems, if you don't have external moment as a joint, they should be the same with different sign. Again, here you get the submission, you will get the same values, but with different sign. And then at the end, you have the fixed end, the moment at the fixed support. Uh, according to this example, you were asked to get only the bending moment at each uh, joint for each member. This is the end of the problem. But in other problems, if you are asked to get the reactions, to draw the shear, to draw the moment, you can use these moments and do that. We will learn how to do that together in the coming example. So let's go to example number two. And within this example, we have some differences. First of all, you will have an end support with a ruler, ruler end support. How this will affect, of course, it will affect the stiffness factor, the distribution factors, and also the fixed end moments. Carry over also will be different. So let's learn together how to do that. In addition, we have another uh, difference that the I for member AB is not similar to the IBC. They are not the same. IAB is 120 times 10 to power 6 millimeter to power 4. However, here it is double 240 times 10 to power 6. So IBC is double or twice the IAB. What is required here? It is required to determine the internal moment as the supports of the beam. But in addition to this, I will show you how to get the reactions, how to draw the shear, and how to draw the bending moment diagrams. So again, let's go. And the first step here, when you have different eyes, okay, so we need to get them in relation to each other. And instead of using the values here, which should be complicated, we can just get the smaller one, we can assume it as EI, okay, the bigger one, we get the ratio. So if this is 120 and we assume that EI, the other one will be 240 divided by 120, so it is double, so it will be 2EI. Okay, so this will be I, and this will be 2I. The E is constant, so I kept them here. After doing that, you have to do the steps as usual, so you get the stiffness factors. The stiffness factor for member A, B, it is fixed continuous, it means fixed, fixed, so this is the original one for EI over L. So for EI over L, so I remove the EI, it will be 4 over L, 1.33. For the second span here, it is fixed or continuous pin. So this is the special case, and we are going to use the special case of stiffness factor, which is 3 EI over L. So it will be 3 EI, by, but don't forget here that the EI is not EI, it is 2 EI. So substitute the value of EI with its actual value here, which will be 2 EI. So it will be 3 times 2 EI over L, remove the EI, so it's 3 times 2, 6 over L, which is 4, it's 1.5. Okay, so we got the K for member AB 1.33, K for member BC is 1.5. So we can move now to the distribution factors. For a fixed support, it is 0. For the pin support or roller end support, it is 1. So the only one that we need to calculate is at the middle. So for the first one, it is known as 0. For the second one, we get left and right. For the left, it will be 1.33 divided by the submission for the joint. So it will give us 0.47. Then the remaining one here, it will be 0.53. So if this is 0.47, so minus one, it will be 0.53. And the last one here, because it's spin or ruler support, it will be one. Then we'll go to the fixed in the moment, but concluding the distribution factors because we will need them to in the table. This is 0 0.47, 0 0.53, and 1. Now, for the fixed in the moment, for the first span here, it is fixed, 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 and no load, so the fixed in the moments will be zeros. For the second span, we have fixed end and pin support under uniform load, so we are going to use the correct values from the fixed in the moment table, and in this case, we have only moment at the fixed support, no moment at the pin or the ruler support in such a case. So for the first one, it is zeros because there is no load. For the second one, from the table, it is WL square over eight. 
So W is 6,000 Newton per meter. L is 4. If you calculated this, it will give you 12,000 Newton meter. This is a small mistake here. This is not kilonewton, so it is Newton meter because the load is in Newton meter. Okay. Why we put here a minus value? Because this is counterclockwise rotation. So according to the moment distribution, it should be minus. Okay. So we finished the first and second step. We now can go to calculating the uh, from the table. We can make the distribution and the carryover. So these are the fixed end moments and the distribution factors. Okay. I make the table joints member distribution factor zero point four. 7.53 and 1. Then fixed end moments A, B, and B, A are zeros. A, B, and B, A will be zeros. Then B, C, and C, B. B, C only is the only moment that we have here, minus 12,000. And then C, B at the end, it is zero because this is a pen support. Now, let's make the distribution. The distribution here, we will do it for the joint at the middle because here there is no distribution. For when you have a joint, uh, an end support with pin or support, even you can remove it from the table because it's not going to take any carry over. So you can just remove it. You can keep A and B because you know the moment here will be just zero, okay? For the fixed here, we don't make any distribution because distribution factor will be zero. Even if we have moment here multiplied by zero, it will give nothing. So just forget it. It will take only some carry over. So the only one will be joint B. We have the submission of the moment here will be minus 12,000 Newton meter. So the distribution should be positive, should be opposite to that minus. So it will be positive. So it will be 12,000 times 0.47. It will give us a 5,647. And then multiply 12,000 by 0.53. It will give us the 6,352. The submission here should be zero. Then we make carry over. Carry over here, the fixed. Support will take some carry over, 50% of that value. However, the pin support will not take carry, any carry over. And this is a famous mistake some students they are doing. So, so therefore, I prefer not just not to put this joint at all when you have pin or ruler support at the end, unless you have a cantilever or you have some joint, external joint moment. And we will discuss these cases in our coming videos in a very easy way that will save too much time from you. Okay, when we have a case of cantilevers, when we have a case of internal joint moment, okay, we can solve it and save like 80 or 90% of the time by what we are going to learn together from the coming video. Okay, just carry over here. This will not take any carry over, so it will be zero, zero here, and distribution will be zero, so we can stop here because there is no more distributions. Then we can get the submission of the moments. Okay, it's very easy. This will be the values of the uh, bending moments, okay? And for, of course, the last one here should be zero. So these are the moments. What else we are going to learn here? How to put this moment on the drawing? Then we can use them to draw the shear, to get the reactions, and to also draw the bending moment diagram. How to do that? To do that, you need to draw the spans, the first span and the second span, okay? And then we have to draw the bending moment. In our case here, the bending moment, we have to draw according to the direction. If it is positive, like the first one, positive, it will be clockwise rotation. So here, this moment here, it should be a clockwise rotation like this, okay? Going from down to up, this is clockwise rotation. Then BA is also called clockwise rotation, so it is correct. Then BC, it is minus, so it is counterclockwise rotation. Then we can, Put the values, okay. How much it will be this value? 2,823.6. Then for this one and that one at the middle, the value was 5,647.2. And then at the end, there is nothing here. It is zero, okay. Then from these moments, we can use them to get the reactions, okay. We can get the reaction. How to do that? In this case, the submission of these moments, both of them are in the same direction. So it is making clockwise rotation, as you can see here. So we need a couple opposite to that one. So it will give us a reaction here going up and going down. If this one is clock making clockwise rotation, the submission of the moment here, this reaction should be in the opposite. So it will be up and down. How to know that? If this one is pushing down, it should 
in the opposite here. This one is pushing up, so the reaction should be in the opposite. How much is these moments equals M over L? The summation of moment divided by the span. So if we do that, the summation of these moments, both of them are in the same direction, so we can get the summation divided by the span, which is three meters. This will give us a reaction of 2,800 uh, 20, no, 23, or 8,000, 2,823, and here 2,823, okay? Then, for the second one, you have moment and you have uniform load, okay? So what to do for the uniform load here, you have to get the resultant of this uniform load. It is 1,000, or 12,000, or it was, let's go back and check this one together, how much it was, the load here. It was 6,000 Newton per meter, okay? So 6,000 Newton per meter multiplied by four, 6,000 multiplied by four, it will give us 24,000 kilo Newton, okay? Then just take a moment here to be able to get the reaction at this point. Okay, so we, if we do that, we will have a reaction of 13,412 Newton. And summation of force in the y direction equals zero. You can get the reaction here, but it will not be down in this case because this is 24,000, it will be going up. So 24,000 minus 13,412, it will give us a reaction here of 10,000. 588. So these are the reactions. If you want to get the final reaction at the middle support, you can get the summation of these two va values. It will give you the reaction at the middle support at joint B. And the reaction at the first and the second support will be directly these two values. Okay. So this is how to calculate the reactions. Now it will be how to draw the shear force diagram, okay? How to draw the shear force diagram and how to draw the bending moment diagram. This is easy. For the shear, we just follow the reactions and the loads. So at joint A here, we have a concentrated load going down or a reaction 2,823 going down, so we will go down, okay? And this will be 2823, okay? Then, for the span, we don't have any loads here, so we can go horizontal, parallel to the member itself. Then at the end here, you will find 2,823 that will take you to zero again. So we started from zero and we ended with zero. This is down, so it will be like a negative shear force diagram. Then we go to the second span. Second span, how much is the load here or the reaction here? 1,300 or 13,412. So by scale, it will be a little bit bigger. 13,412. Then you have uniform load. So you can go dot line like this. Then this uniform load will take you down to minus 1, 10,588. Okay, at this point. Okay, then between them, because this load is uniform load, so it will be here a linear. This moment, this shear force, it will be a linear distribution like this. And then you will find that this 10,588 will take you to again to zero. So we started from zero, we went up, we, then we went down with the load as a uniform load, so it will be linear. Then the uh, last reaction here will take us to zero, and this will be a positive value and a negative value. This will be the shear force diagram, okay? How about the moment diagram? Again, we draw the spans. We have one span and two spans. For drawing the moment, I know for many students, it is difficult than drawing the shear. However, I will show you here that it is much easier even drawing the shear, and we can draw the moment even without drawing the shear at all, okay? So for the moment, the idea here, look to the moments at the ends, at the supports at A and B and C, okay? So at the support C, at the last support here, how much is the moment? The moment is zero. So we come here and put the moment is zero. We know this point, the moment will be zero. At the first support, 
the moment how much? It is 2,823.6 and it's going up, okay? So draw the moment at the position of the arrow side. If this arrow side is going up like this, so we know the moment will be up. It will be a positive moment. So this one, I will go up here and draw the moment up, okay? So if we assume that positive up and down is negative, Many textbooks, they draw the opposite. They, they draw the moment on the tension side, okay? Here I'm showing you how to draw the moment. We draw the moment in the compression side, so the positive is up and negative is down. So in this case, if you are drawing positive up, so it will be here, this is pushing up, okay? So you come here and go up, and this will be the value of 2,823.6. This is Newton millimeter. Then for this, the joint B. For joint B, the moment is pushing down like this. So where is the head here and where is the head here? Both the head are down and should be like that. So if they are down, I will put them down. So this will be here, 5,000 or 5,000 something. Okay, let's make it bigger like this. So this value is 5,647.2. Why I put it down here? Because we draw on the head side, okay? Because there will be a negative moment, as you know, the sign convention for the moment. If the moment is pushing down like this, you concave down, this will be a negative moment. And the opposite, if the moment is pushing up, it will be like a, a positive moment, okay? Then we got the values of the moment at each end, okay? At joint A, B, and C. Then we need to connect between these joints. In the case of, Member A, B, there is no load at all. So you can make a straight line. Okay, this will be a straight line. However, for the second one, you have a zero here and you have a moment at this point and you, there is a uniform load. So in this case, you just you make a dot line because you know it will not be a concentrated line. Now, this load is pushing down like this. Okay, so our we know that from this one, it is... Uh, uniform and the shear is linear, so the moment will be a second degree curve. It will go up or it will go down just to make it opposite to the load. If the load is pushing down, so the moment will be going up like this and it will come back somewhere here. Okay, this will be the moment. Anything above here will be assumed as positive, positive, and down here will be negative. This is also according if we draw the bending moment in the compression side. As I told you, there are many uh, textbooks they draw the bending moment in the tension side. Myself, I prefer to draw the bending moment in the tension side, but just not to confuse many of you. Okay, now we finished almost 90% of the bending moment. The only thing is that we need to get the bending moment at the zero shear because at the zero shear, we have a maximum moment because the slope of the moment will be the value of the shear, okay? We know that the moment is the integration of the uh, shear force diagram. So we know at the zero shear, we have a maximum moment. We can get this, this delta M here from the shear area. You can get it from the shear area. This is one method. But if you, uh, and the value here in this case will be 934.3. And this distance here will be uh, about, let's say, 5, okay, 8, minus 5.235. So this distance will be 2.765 meter. Okay. This is, you can do it from the triangle here. You can get the X and you can get the maximum moment from the area of this shear force diagram. This is a method, but can we get it also using another method, even if we don't draw the shear force diagram, of course, we can do that. This is easy. You need to know where is the section X, distance X here, that will give you a zero shear, okay? So I'm going to draw this again. Here you have a reaction. This reaction is 10,588. And you have a uniform load here, and you need to get this distance X. This uniform load was 6,000 Newton per millimeter. So in this case, you can summation of the force equal zero. So the resultant here, okay, will be 6,000 6, X. So you can say 6,000 X, okay, equals 10 
5.88. So from here we can get the x equals 10,588 divided by this w, which is the uniform load. So it will give us exactly the same values that we have it here, 2.765. Then, can we calculate the moment at this section, submission of moment at x equals how much? This support times x minus this value times x over 2, okay? So it will be 10,588 times x, which we calculated here, minus 6,000 x times x over 2, so it will be 6,000 x square over 2, Okay, from here we can get the bending moment, which will be exactly 934.3 Newton millimeter, similar to what we calculated here. So you can draw the bending moment even without calculating shear, without doing all the work that we did here. You need only to get one reaction, and then you can draw the moment without drawing the shear. Okay, this will be the end of uh, this video. But in the coming video, we are going to take some special cases, which will be very important for all of you because we'll take, when we have a cantilever, how can we solve it with an easy method that will save you 90% of the time? How to do when we have a joint moment at an intermediate joint, what, how to solve that case and do it easily? Okay, so uh, wait, for the wait for me for the coming video. If you like the video, uh, please uh, like it because this will help to uh, suggest the video for other uh, students, so it will be useful. Also, subscribe and click the bell to receive any new videos. Okay, thank you for watching and see you in the coming uh, video.